Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark Spencer. I'm with Steve Martin. And today we're going to talk about the incredibly interesting subject of batch renaming. Yes, batch renaming. Okay. It's a, I get a lot of emails about this. Um, Final Cut Pro imports all your footage with the native uh, file names of the camera. And a lot of people are like, well, how do I organize it? I want to change the name. I want to, I want to be able to organize it, and, and, and I don't want this nondescript you know, camera name. Because a lot of those file names are, are very archaic, and it's very hard to de decipher what it says. And you could, you could rename them yourself in the finder before importing them. That's correct. But this is a much better way, Oh, my right? gosh. I, I, why would somebody want to do that? I'm, I'm still... <laughs> so don't rename them in the finder, because this is going to be a much faster way to Look, do this. Look, one of the things that people need to understand about Final Cut 10 is that metadata is the key to Final Cut Pro 10. As, yeah. long as, as long as you understand how metadata works, you don't have to worry about what the names of the files are the on the hard drive. You don't have to yeah. think about it. Yeah. So I'm gonna show you about how to go ahead and organize and use metadata to organize and rename your content so you can find it easier once it's in Final Cut. Once it's in Final Cut, okay. Well, um, it sounds like a very necessary, if not very sexy thing to do. So let's let's get let's, it how, okay. how it works. So if you look here, this is a some, this is a project I shot back at, around Christmas time. Basically, it's this um, old ghost town in, in, in Jerome, and you I've can been see there. It's yes, a cool place. it's a really cool place. And so these are your clip names here, two thousand twelve. They aren't the actual clip names, but when you bring it into Final Cut, Final Cut automatically assigns a name based on a time and oh, date. Okay, so these are different than the names of the clip. Correct. In the yeah. I could I could assign it the names, the actual names, but that that's even less useful. At least this is somewhat useful. I have a date and a timestamp. Okay. By default, okay. that's what Final Cut does. Yes. And, and you think about it. it that makes sense because events are based on time on and time. date. It's an, right. an event, and so clips would have a time and date stamp. All right. Okay. So this this is showing you the year, month, day, and actual time that of clip every, every clip. That's right. That, that, that's the metadata that was on the from the camera. Right. Exactly. Got that it. was recorded okay. with the camera. So now so you want to change. That. But I want to change this because this is less than useful for me. The, so what I want to do is use this little task menu down here, this little gear menu, which is really. I mean, amazingly helpful. There's a couple of those couple around. Of them around, but this one really great. is. Yeah. In that, first of all, I'm in list view. I'm not in thumbnail view. I think it's important to be in list view because you have all your metadata columns yeah, available. It's like too. a, I kind of like it. It's a big spreadsheet, basically, right? But yeah, it's very much like the old Final Cut, but it's much more useful in that how you can sort things. Okay. So, for example, using this task menu, uh, I'm going to go down and choose, choose uh, group clips by, and I'm going to choose content created. Okay. okay. And in other words, the metadata on the clips themselves will tell you what date the stuff was uh, created. So you can see as I scroll up here, all these clips were recorded on January 11th. All Got these it. clips were recorded on December 30th. All these clips yes. were recorded. so put them into groups. Extremely, yep. extremely helpful. Yep. So group, group some right away. So I know what day I shot what. Okay. Okay. Next thing is, and I highly recommend this, is set up your column view. And by notice here I have scene and reel. These are going to be very important in terms of uh, meta tagging my clips. If I control click on this, you'll notice that the check marks tell me what columns are currently visible for. Yes, so yes. I find it essential to have the real and seen uh, metadata columns available to you, as okay. you can see here. And notes too, you might want to give notes. And by the way, smart collections really rely on, you can build some whole smart collections just on the notes. notes. Yeah, but that's, yeah. All, you can that's any, another subject for another time. Yeah. But you can re reorganize these, right? Yeah, just can, like Legacy Final Cut, yeah, you, can you can sort can of drag these around. Move these around. So it really, really is a, a big spreadsheet. It is. It's a, it a is. database, but it looks like a big spreadsheet, yeah. So what we want to do is, I think the first thing is assign reels. I mean, in that Final Cut 7, you could do that. You would sign the reel as you're bringing, you'd sign it before you brought it in. Uh -huh. Final Cut 10, it's a reverse. We're going to sign the reel after they're already been imported. Okay. So in this case, I like to create reels based on the day. It's so like, for example, this is all January 11th stuff. I'm going to go ahead and select all that content. I'm going to sign it a reel. So you click the first one and shift click to the last yep. one, select, select everything right. in between. So then you go to the info tab. You click up here at the top, and very important, the views. There's different views here. You have basic yes. view, general. You make sure you're in the extended view. Okay. Now, the reason the extended view is important, Mark, is that if I scroll up, you have a lot of fields that aren't in the basic view. And you know, you being a multicam guy, and then your multicam cam course, you you this is where you add angles and yes. takes camera and whatnot. Angle. Yes. And here, what I want to do is uh, under real, I'm going to assign a real for this. So I'm going to call this J for Jerome, and then D for Day. 
one. Uh, it's always important to keep your real names fairly short and concise. So, okay, Jerome, so you're saying one. you're signing the same real name for all of these clips on January 11th. They day. were shot right. on that day. Okay. So I'm going to click return. Look what happened in the just, amendment, assign them. Uh, just assign them. Okay. Okay. Let's let's quickly go through this because I want you, them to see the complete workflow. So I'm okay. going to shift click, select these, go to the um, go to back to the inspector and under real i'm going to put this drone day two two okay return and let's do okay. all able let's do let's yeah. go ahead and just do the last one really quick select select these go back to the inspector and again just to be clear right now you're adding metadata in order to batch rename the clips we're not actually renaming the clips right now we're just adding Information We're just adding clips. Well, yeah. Th that, you, that you end up using for renaming the Well, let me, let me clarify. You would do this anyway in the Final Cut 7 workflow. You would yeah. just do it at the front end. Yes. Yes. So there's nothing it's different. We're thing. just doing it now instead of, the, yep. instead of before the import. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. So let's go and let's go ahead and work with the scene now. Okay. These, there's some, this is where I get, get more specific. So like, for example, um, I'm going to go through here and uh, this is like an old house here and then down here. This is like a jail. Okay, so these are all jail. There's an old house here. So I'm going to select these three okay. clips, and I'm going to meta tag those in the scene column. I'm going to use the scene. I'm going to call this. Uh, these are all actually mail order houses. You can order houses from Sears and Robux at one point, um, and, they and, and they deliver, deliver a, a house on, to you. they deliver a house to you on rails. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So that's I'm going to go ahead wow. and click uh, Sears. I'm going to I'm going to call this one Sears House, and I hit return. And as soon as I do that, in the inspector, you'll notice under scene, uh, those three yep. clips are same named. Same ways with the real, okay. The same thing like you did uh, as you were logging um, prior to importing in Final Cut 7. So these, I'm going to call this one, these are, um, this is this is all the jail. The so jail, jail okay. jer return. Let's just quickly get down to these here. These are, just I'll skip this, the day two stuff for a moment. This is all the old hotel. So I'm going to select these, go into scene and type out hotel. Okay, and you can see that the under scene that hotel has now been assigned yep. as the metadata column for these. Okay, so that's helpful in its own right, being able to do that, yep. being able to quickly look, and then you could sort by real, you can sort by scene. You could make uh, keyword collections or smart collections based on these. Yeah, you, on there's data. a lot of different ways you yeah. can do it, but here's where it's really powerful. I'm looking at the names of these, and these names Final Cut assigned is, again, time, date, stamps, not the most helpful. It'd be really neat to have a quick way of renaming these based on the metadata fields I just assigned. Based on multiple metadata multiple fields. Multiple metadata fields. Okay. This is where okay. it's really powerful. Okay. Um, and what we do is, with any of the clips selected, I, or I'm gonna, you can uh, go to this little gear menu down here. And there was another place you can... Uh, Under the modify uh, say, You can say, uh, you can go custom name, you can essentially create a naming preset, and you said there was another where under the modify menu, you can also um, go down to uh, apply custom name. This is the other place, and you go to uh, you want to create a new one. Okay. And we're going to create a new naming preset. And the first thing I suggest you do is name this. I'm going to call this Jerome. That's where it was shot. So we got a new Jerome naming preset. Yes. And what I want to do is I want to create. Um, I want to create a custom preset based on these little tokens. Basically, they're stand-ins for actual uh, information. Okay, so they they represent those fields. They represent all, all, the, all the available fields. That's right. Basically. Okay, and they're able to ter interpret the metadata in those fields to create a name. Okay. Okay. So it's like little Lego building blocks. That that's you're right. Build this up here. So for example, if I grab this, I can bra drag scene in there. So this right. naming convention is going to grab the scene metadata as part of its name. Okay. And then what I like to do is add a little hash between them, so it creates separation in the name. So okay, you can type and add anything else in there. That's right. Okay. You can get whatever you want. Yeah. So I put scene and then dash, and then I also want to. I want to remember. I put in the real. Yeah. I want to know what real it came yeah. from. So I'll add a real. And if you wanted the real first, you could. Move I can it move over. it around, and, right? Okay. I'm going to put another dash. Mm -hmm. And a last thing I want to put in is a counter. This is really really handy. Let me do this again a little. Because otherwise, two clips with the same scene and the same reel would be named exactly the same? They would be named exactly the same. And by okay. counter would de delineate them. If I look down here, you could say, you can create a custom counter starting at, let's say, 01. And you can even de define the number of digits, in this case, two. two so basically, okay. the naming will start at 01. And then it will increment 02, automatically. 03, 04, et cetera. Okay. Increment automatically. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm going to click OK. And watch how powerful this is. 
You set this up once. Uh -huh. That's all you have to do. So, for example, I'm going to take these first three shots, which I said was the old Sears, um, Sears and Roebuck house. I'm going to select those, right? Okay. And I'm going to go over to the gear menu, and I'm going to just choose Apply Custom Name, Jerome. Now, mm -hmm. watch the name of okay. the clip. Just like that. Sears house, it tells you the real name, and it even gives increment. Okay. Even increments it. So it's the scene, it's the real, and then increment it that's by right. the counter. That's right. And that's I'll, I'll do this set too. So these will select those. And I'm gonna go up here, apply custom name, Jerome, boom, just like that. Jail, the real renamed. number, and they're all numbered, ready to go. Wow. Fantastic. And you could modify that if you decided, wait, I, I want to add in when it was shot or something. Yeah, like this doesn't tell me shot. what the order, uh, what time of day it was shot. Yeah, so, like you know you would do other shots and you really want to really see the order they were shot in. Sure, so you can go back over here and you could say, let's see here, let me grab a, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna edit. Uh, let's apply custom name, choose edit. Edit, okay. And I'm gonna go into Jerome. And let's say I wanted to add, what did I say, it's like uh, clip time. Yeah. I could just actually, okay. let me add a little da a dash. Okay. And it'll say clip time right here. Yep. I can just grab that and add that as a token there. So now it's going to grab the clip okay. time from the metadata. And will of the it clip. automatically update everything that's been well, named with that? Or I to... don't believe so. I think you I have to re. I think you have to reapply okay. the name. In fact, let's let's do that on these fresh ones down here. Let's go ahead and um, select these this old hotel, and let's go ahead and choose apply custom name, and choose Jerome. Jerome. Yeah. And just like that, you'll see that not only did it add the the, the scene, yep. it added the reel, and it added the number incrementation, and then it added the time of day that it was actually it was shot. shot. So you can you know you shot something early in the morning or in the afternoon, you could grab it from there because you could keep some because that information was in the original clip name, but you were able basically to keep it. That's right. And what's yeah. amazing, and this is I'm I'm going through this. These shots are exactly the order I shot them on that day. Yes. It's just yes. fantastic. I mean, people ask me about, well, Final Cut 7, I, it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you don't get it. Deep breath. Oh my gosh, Deep you don't breath. get how powerful this is. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's just an amazing way to organize stuff. So again, what I'm hearing from people is they just don't really understand the power yeah. built in of the metadata possible. of what's possible in Final Cut 10. So that was kind of a longer episode, but really, really important. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of you are asking me about this. Well, there, there's your episode on... It's just yeah. another tool on top of being able to use keywords and smart collections That's and right. automatically creating those collections on import. It's just another tool to be able, especially if you have a lot of, of clips to organize, is a great way to do it to it's get a, to things quickly. I, I agree. Cool. I agree. Fantastic. So uh, more information on rippletraining.com, about Final Cut Pro 10, about Motion, about Smoke, about... DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, and, we actually um, have a dedicated tutorial on media management. Too. On media management. There yeah. you go, in Final Cut Pro 10. And a variety of plugins for Final Cut Pro 10 as well. So please check that out, rippletraining.com. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Steve. And we'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.